Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for another video. I'm Michael, and if you're new here, uh, we talk a lot about dividend investing on this channel. Um, and I talk a lot about investing, personal finance, credit, all of that good stuff. Hopefully by the end of this year, I'll be talking about real estate, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, but anyway, um, if you are not new here, then you do know that we talk a lot about uh, dividend investing in general. Well, more or less, more than any other type of investing. Um, I do a lot of dividend investing. And I want to go over some of the things I've been seeing over the past couple of uh, weeks, months, should you, sh uh, I should say. And and it has to do with dividend investing. Um, it's, a, it's a big, big problem. I say a big problem. It's a big mistake a lot of newbie investors, even even moderate to, to you know, old school investors or you know people who know what they're doing they still sometimes fall in these types of traps or make these types of mistakes but before we do so listen if you want to help out this channel any way possible go ahead and smash that thumbs up button for the youtube algorithm and if you do get a little bit of knowledge or you know gain something from this video go ahead smash that thumbs up button and Click that little red subscribe button while you're down there to join this little family we got going on. Guys, once again, thank you for getting me to 500. Before April 30th, we're almost to 550. You guys are amazing. Thank you guys so much for that. Hope y'all are staying safe out there with all the you know craziness going on. But anyway, back to what we were talking about. So um, the base, this is a, a big mistake that I see a lot of investors make, and I myself have made it before. Um, and it's basically chasing that dividend yield. It's, it's basically chasing a high dividend yield, falling in what we call a dividend investing trap, high dividend yield trap. Um, this is the dividend investor's number one mistake, especially a lot of new investors, like I said, uh, immediate to you know older investors are more aged investors still sometimes fall and they need this trap as well sometimes owning a company at a certain period of time is good and then later on when something happens a later period of time um it turns into a dividend trap so guys for instance you guys know that i own ford i own about 70 shares of ford and one of the big things with ford was this dividend yield it had a high dividend yield i think right before its dividend got cut which was on March 19th, it had a dividend yield of 12.12%, which is very high and very appealing for dividend investors. But unfortunately, it's got its dividend cut. Um, Boeing is also another company that cut their dividend on March 20th, and they are also cutting their repurchasing of shares on March 20th as well, they did so. But before they cut it, the dividend yield was 6.438%. Macy's and Nordstrom is, you know, retail stores. They also suspended their dividend as well. Macy's dividend was 26.67%. That is an insane dividend and it's not um, sustainable, like for what they had going on. And I'll show you guys later in the video how to, um, just real quick to see if a dividend, if the dividend stock itself is a dividend trap or if it's not, you know what I mean? Just a little quick boom, 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 just to see if it's worth putting more time into looking at or not. Now, another good stock, well, now another high yield stock would be AT&T. And I'll go over this a little bit later on in the video. But AT&T has a dividend yield of 6.96% as of right now, which is pretty high for a dividend stock. But certain companies do certain things in order to keep their dividend. Because once a dividend stock um, cuts its dividend or suspends it, that pretty much sends the stock into free fall like what we saw with Ford. And Boeing and Macy's and Delta Marriott and several others on this list but sometimes certain stocks do certain things certain companies do certain things in order to not keep cut their dividend certain companies will do all just about anything to not cut their dividend 
because this is what is so appealing to stock, you know, to, to um, investors, which is the dividend. A lot of companies are just bought solely because of the dividend, because they're dividend aristocrats or dividend kings. You know, we all, sh we shouldn't do that, but sad to say, uh, some people do do that. <laughs> but AT&T suspends its share buyback program because it's wanting to uh, keep that dividend. And I'll go over what a share buyback program is later on in this video. So AT&T made a defensive move in order to keep their dividend strong and to make sure that they can continue paying out their dividend at least in the short term at the rate it's at. And as we all know, Delta suspended their dividend on March 20th as well but their dividend was 5.98% as of um, before they cut it. Marriott Hotel suspended their dividend as well. And Darden Restaurant suspended their dividend, which was 6.532%, and that is uh, the owner of Olive Garden, I believe. And really, there's certain reasons why they suspend their dividend, and I'm gonna explain to you guys in a second what that is, but I think we need to understand what a dividend is in order to know why they're paying it out and um, why they are suspending it. So a dividend is basically just like a bonus or it's a perk you get when you buy a stock. Um, it's basically a profit share. So every quarter you get a share of the profits they pay out to you. Most of the time it's quarterly, sometimes it's monthly. But they share, they pay you a portion of the profits for the previous quarter. Um, that's what you know a dividend is. Now a share buyback program is when a company buys its own shares off the market. You know, it's, it's shares that aren't bought up yet. They buy these unbought shares off the market, which basically causes the price per share to increase. You know, it brings the value up. And a lot of companies do this because not only does it make the stock look more appealing because it's going up, but a lot of these top guys in these companies um, have monetary stake in stock in this company, in these companies. So they gain from it just like you gain from it whenever the stock goes up. So they want to buy back these shares so they can make money as well. But sometimes when they spend too much money buying back these shares, kind of like Delta and a few of these other companies did, um, they spend too much money and they don't have enough money for times like this when the market crashes and you know we fall into a recession and people aren't spending money like talking about and just everything is going down basically. Um, they could have had that money from share buyback, you know, cut back doing that and had money on the sideline instead of having no money on the sideline for times like this. These are basically big name companies, you know, Ford, Macy's, Delta, uh, Boeing. These are well-established companies. They're big name companies and they cut their dividend, which, you know, really caused a lot of upset with their shareholders, which caused a sell-off and just, you know, that whole snowball effect. So the question is, how can you tell if a dividend stock is a good dividend stock? Or in other words, how can you tell if a dividend is safe? So the way you do this is simple. It's a, you basically compare the annualized payout of the dividend for the company. You compare it to the annualized EPS of the company for the fiscal year, the same two years you compare them and you, you see if you're, if you're paying out more than your EPS is, then you're going to have a problem. You know, you, that's not sustainable. You're not really going to be able to, um, you're not really gonna be able to continue doing that, especially during economic hardship, economic downturn when no one's spending money and yada, 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 all this other stuff that's going on. So for instance, in 2019, AT&T earned a EPS of the entire year, you know, of the its fiscal year, it was a dollar and 89 cents. Meaning every quarter added up for the fiscal uh, year of 2019, you add each earnings call they had and you add all that up, you know, there's four quarters in a year. So you add each quarter up, boom, 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 one, two, three, four, and it counted up to $1.89. Now it's annualized payout, which is also quarterly, amounted to $2.05. So 
So it doesn't take a genius to know that um, they are obviously paying out more money than they are earning per year. Now, if the annualized payout would have been less than the EPS per year, then they would have, uh, then they would have a more sustainable uh, dividend. But like we said earlier, guys, AT&T did not cut their stock. They cut their buy, their share buyback program, meaning they still pay their dividend. You know, and they didn't cut it, they didn't suspend it. Even though for 2019, it was just passed up and they're actually paying more per share now. Uh, even though for 2019, when all of this market crash didn't happen, it wasn't sustainable then, what makes you think that it's sustainable now? Uh, it's not really 100% sustainable and I'll, I'll show you guys exactly why in a second. But if you look at 2019, it wasn't sustainable then. Right now, it's not sustainable. And the easiest thing to look at is the payout ratio. You don't have to figure out the EPS and the annualized payout every time. Um, if you use, I personally, I like to use Yahoo Finance. If you go to Yahoo Finance and you look at the payout ratio or the PR ratio, whatever you want to call it, um, I think it's PR ratio on there actually. But the payout ratio, it shows you a percentage and the percentage right now is over 100 percent it's 108 percent so that is not sustainable but they're not trying to cut their dividends so they're trying to keep it at that but it's not sustainable and if you don't understand what a payout ratio is i'm going to explain it to you right now so look at it like this anything below 100 percent of a payout ratio is paying less than their earning so basically they're paying you less than what they're earning so if they're paying 50 percent they're only paying 50% of their earnings. If they're equal to 100%, then they're paying all of their earnings in dividends. They're paying everything that they make that year or that quarter or that month in dividends. Now, if they're above 100%, they're paying more than they're earning and that's not sustainable. They're actually giving you more money than they're making. That meaning they have to dip into their cash reserves, dip into their short-term investments, whatever the case may be. Some companies are well equipped to stay above 100% for a little while, but not very long, um, but not very long. You know what I mean? I think AT&T needs to do a little something in order to continue paying out at over 100% or, you know, come back from it. But luckily they're not that far over 100%. I wish they would be a little bit, you know, down, but they're not. But guys, so basically, in order to know if it's a dividend trap or not, you go to the payout ratio and you look. If it's between, you know, 50 and 70%, that's generally a good idea. Me personally, I like it below 75%. Me personally, I like the payout ratio to be below 75%. And I'm more comfortable with that. The lower it is, generally the better. Some companies, pay out a little more like at t it's a great company it's a good company but they have strategies in order to not cut their dividend up not um to not cut their dividend and not suspend it but like i said earlier guys if they were running at a deficit in 2019 if it's not sustainable on paper it's not sustainable in 2019 what makes you think it's going to be sustainable in 2020 i'm not saying at t is going to cut their dividend i'm not saying any stock is going to cut their dividend if it's over 100 percent i'm just saying that um this is a easier way to look at if it's a trap or not i don't think at&t is a um dividend trap i don't think that they're gonna cut their dividend but i do think that they need i do think that they have a plan readily available that um over the next following months that they will go through and they will push through if they do not come back, you know, from the depths of where they're at. And they're not really that far down. But anyway, guys, look, I hope you learned uh, exactly how to identify a dividend trap in this video. Obviously, there are a little more things you have to do, but you know, easiest way to do, easiest way to do is look at that pay, look at that payout ratio. If it's 100% or more, um, I wouldn't even waste my time in furthering looking into that stock. Um, if it is below 100%, make sure it's below 70%, 75%, 75% or lower. And then do your due diligence there. Look at the balance sheet. Look at all of that. And uh, 
definitely that should you know at least be a starting point for you which would be the payout ratio if you're a dividend investor but guys like i said i hope this helped you out this little formula and this little video i made for you guys if it did if you learned something from this video go ahead and smash that thumbs up button for the youtube algorithm and if you made it all the way to here and you haven't hit that red subscribe button yet go ahead and do so turning it gray so you can join this little family we got going on guys once again thank you guys so much for getting me to 500 let's see if we can get to 550 by the end of april i know we can i think we had like 545 right now almost 100 subs in a month you guys are awesome for that thank you so much look out for new content coming uh every three days pretty much when i put out new content so keep an eye on that generally uh sunday monday and uh, Thursday, Friday is whenever I do it, just depending on my editing schedule and my work schedule and all that. Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to continue your journey to financial enlightenment, go ahead and click one of these videos. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay masked up. Stay quarantined. All right. Y'all have a good day.